Okay, so I had dry needling, so I came up with a couple questions that uh, kind of clarify things what dry needling is. Um, dry needling is also known as the myofascial trigger point dry needling is the use of either a solid filiform needle or a hollow core hypodermic needles for therapy of muscle pain, including pain related to the myofascial pain syndrome. Um, people who can use dry needling, um, all I could really find were physicians, physical therapists, and chiropractors. Um, it doesn't say anywhere that I found yet that athletic trainers are allowed to perform dry needling. Um, as far as requirements to perform dry needling, it's basically just a certification saying that you went through all the uh, courses and took online exams and things of that nature. But it's, like I said, it's a physician, um, a PT, a chiropractor. Uh, you have to go through those com uh, courses, attending seminars, and then passing those online certifications. Um, most states legally approve dry needling, um, but there are a few that still don't. And uh, Ohio does re recognize dry needling. Um, and then the other one was the difference between acupuncture and dry needling. Um, acupuncture involves the needles being inserted at a certain acupuncture point, mostly found along meridian lines. Uh, these lines represent uh, organs of the body and have their origins in ancient Chinese medical history. Um, the underlying treatment philosophy is based on the concept of balance and maintaining free flow electricity within the body whereas dry needling is just based on the theory that when trigger points develop in the muscles they lead to a neuromuscular dysfunction resulting in pain uh, decreased function and an increased stress on surrounding structures acupuncture style needles are used to elicit a twitch response to release the trigger point and then restore normal function of that muscle uh, I had three articles obviously um, effects of dry needling on thigh muscle strength and hip flexion in elite soccer players. The purpose of the study is to determine whether or not dry needling is effective increasing muscle endurance, force, and flexibility. Uh, we had 29 elite youth soccer players ages from 18 to 23 from the German Bundesliga. Uh, there were three groups randomly organized, dry needling with a laser, dry needling with water massage, and then no intervention. Three time periods of measurement, baseline, post-treatment, which was four weeks, and then follow-up, which was 12 weeks after baseline. Treatments were one week, uh, or one once uh, per week for four weeks, um, and then the dry needling was effective for short-term and current test and flexibility of the hip flexors and knee extension, and then muscle endurance compared to the control and the placebo group, um, which was the dry needling and the water massage. Uh, but there was no significant difference regarding injuries or recovery time. A second article I came up with was the effectiveness of dry needling and stretching or stretching alone on hamstring flexibility in patients with knee pain. Uh, the purpose of this study was to determine if the addition of hamstring dry needling to a standard stretching program resulted in greater improvements of flexibility compared to the dry needling group. Uh, there was 39 subjects, you know, 37, fe uh, 37 males and two females, and then there was a control group of intervention group, um, you know, who didn't get anything. Patients received the dry needling or sham dry needling. Um, they were basically just kind of touching the skin with a um, finishing nail found in construction, um, and then with the hamstring stretch along with it. Each subject performed hamstring stretching three times uh, daily for one week. Measurements again were taken at baseline post intervention uh, and then one, three, and seven days post intervention. Post intervention was four weeks. Results indicated an improvement in hamstring flexibility. Um, however, the time by group interaction indicated that there was no significant difference between dry needling and then the sham dry needling. And then the last article was strengthening exercises combined with dry needling with electrical stim to improve pain and function in patients with chronic rotator cuff uh, tendinopathy. Purpose of this study obviously is to evaluate the combination of dry needling and electrical stim along with strength and exercise protocols to relieve rotator cuff tendinopathy. We had eight subjects complaining of rotator cuff uh, tendinopathy and they had to be complaining it for, for greater than 90 days. All subjects were tested to determine function and rule out any neurovascular pathologies. Uh, subjects measured pre and post exams. 
um, which was eight weeks in this one. Procedures of dry needling, stim, and exercises were completed one to two times per week um, for a duration of four to eight weeks. Total amount of sessions were determined by the subject response to the treatment, um, but no subject completed more than 16 sessions throughout the uh, protocol. Following structures were tested. Um, we have the supraspinatus musculotendinous junction at the humeral head, supraspinatus anterior and posterior tendinosus junctions on the greater tube, supraspinatus tendinosus junction in the muscle belly at the supraspinatus fossa, and the deltoid tendinosus inser insertion at the deltoid tuberosity. Uh, post treatment patients reported improved sleep. Um, reaching and lifting abilities for reaching for things on top of shelves that they normally couldn't reach for. Uh, just some general self-care activities um, they were talking about, combing hair, brushing teeth, um, putting on clothes, things like that. Everything where you kind of had to move your arm up and over. Uh, and then improvements in just overall strength. A um, couple things that I came up with for like limitations. All our articles were faced with limitations during research. The overall results of the three articles suggest dry needling is beneficial in relieving just trigger point um, myofascial points. Although each article combined uh, dry needling with a different treatment medium, so it wasn't just dry needling on its own. Um, and then I chose the dry needling because I was had seen it at the Cleveland Clinic when I was there last year. Um, and each patient that I came across with actually when they came back after a treatment exhibited relief for the dry needling session so i was kind of interested to do a little bit more research on it and i think more research uh, should be taken before i said you know me personally suggest any of my patients um, to get dry needling um, and as of now it seems as though it may be a treatment intervention worth considering um, but like i said most uh, need to do some more research on it that's it i'll have this all posted on um, blackboard with the video that way you guys can reference the articles if you need to and if you guys have any questions because you decide you want to write a reaction paper on it let me know thank you